Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Beautiful Soul Speaks. I am your host, Beautiful Soul, and we are going to get into last night's episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, before we get too deep in it, I need to tell Portia, I'm over this thing. You crying and, you know, letting us know that you found some inappropriate things in Dennis's phone when it comes to another woman. As of right now, we know that you and Dennis are back together. So I'm ready to start getting there. I don't want to see any more crying. I don't want to deal with all this emotional stuff. Okay. Now that I got that off my chest. <laughs> Let's talk about last night's episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta. So Cynthia and Candy meet up and they get to talking about Sincerely and the OLG, what happened at the OLG and the fact that Kenya, you know, basically spilled the beans after they had agreed that, you know, they were going to set aside some time, get together, go over to Portia's house and talk about it with Portia. Portia then arrives and Portia, you know, they're asking how she's doing. Portia says she's not ready to go back to work. You know, she's been with her baby 24 hours a day and she's having a hard time at the thought of leaving her baby. Um, Cynthia basically, you know, looks at Portia and says, what's going on? Basically, you could see Portia's hurt. And so we get to going into Portia letting us know how heartbroken she is and how the trust that she had with Dennis has been broken, but she's not really saying what has happened. You know, you're, you're giving us all of these, these clues. We kind of like have an idea of what has happened, but Portia is not coming out and saying, well, yeah, he cheated and this is what I found and this is what was said and this is you know she ain't getting into the details and that's kind of like annoying me but the ladies you know they're they're kind of like on edge want to know the specifics as to what went down and um, we find out that through all of the back and forth between her and Dennis and her being upset with Dennis and him being in protective mode, trying to hold on to his lie, we find out that Dennis took the ring back. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. So you love this woman to propose to her. You loved her enough to um, get her pregnant. Y'all are y'all have a beautiful baby. Um, you want to marry this woman. You were the one that messed up. So you're going to get mad because she's upset. She's hurt. She's broken. And you take the ring back. Ooh, I don't know how I would have. If he would have taken the ring back, I probably would have been like, you know what, bitch, you could keep that ring. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's another side to Beautiful Soul that y'all don't get to see too often. But, yeah, I would have told him, keep that ring. Um, they get to even, you know, telling Portia that she's not even looking herself. You know, she's not wearing heels. We get a flash at the cute little flat sandals that she's wearing. Um, Portia, you know, Cynthia and Candy are just wanting Portia to not lose herself or be stuck in this moment. They want her to try to get back to her. Um, Cynthia was even encouraging her, you need to get back to work. You don't want to be stuck in this moment, which I agree with. You know, you got to quickly find yourself. If you don't find yourself during these moments of heartbreak that that life hands over to you, you will find yourself just stuck and you don't want to be stuck. Trust me. I've been stuck and it was hard to fight my way back, but I had to do it. And here I am happily single. <laughs> Next up, we're with Eva. She's over at dish. She's getting beat. Um, but she's ready for her break for Portia to come back to work. Cynthia calls while she's, you know, getting all made up. Let's um, Eva know that she was a hot topic over at Kenya's party. And the reason being is because, you know, she didn't bring her kids. And, you know, of course, Eva starts with the shade and she called the ladies nappy head. And I was like, ooh, I felt that in my gut. I just, that's just such a... 
derogatory, a racial derogatory term. And I don't want to hear my black people saying that about black women because it's used to make, make black women um, not feel superior, to make black women feel less than. And I have a problem with that, Eva. Why did you say that? Why did you say that? Did y'all hear that? Did it hit you in your gut the way it hit me in my gut? Y'all let me know down in the comment section. Next, we're over with Kenya. She's with baby Brooklyn. She finally gets Mark on the phone. They're FaceTiming. Um, he said something. I don't know what he said. I didn't care enough to, to rewind it to find out what he said. But whatever he said, it kind of made Kenya feel a certain kind of way. She lets us know that Mark has two kids from a previous relationship. And she feels that Mark treats her as if she doesn't know about kids because he has these two other kids from a previous relationship and she's a first time mommy. So yeah, if y'all know what he said, y'all let me know down in the comment section. Um, but you know, they're having family time through FaceTime. He's getting to see Brooklyn crawl. He's getting to see his two main ladies, I guess. Well, maybe Brooklyn is the main lady at this point. <laughs> And as they round out the conversation, Kenya's like, when are we going to see you next? And he responds and says, hmm, we'll see. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. So your response to that is like, we'll see. Uh, not, babe, you know, I got a lot going on. So I think it'll be next week. You know, I'm going to fly down. Nothing like that. It's like, hmm, we'll see. Ooh, child. <sighs> mm. Okay, moving on. We're with Cynthia and Noel. Noelle's home from school. She's talking about how um, she had to deal with anxiety when she was in school. Um, they talk about Mike. Cynthia's very happy. She's made it very clear. She's very happy with Mike. And we learned that Noelle is basically sexually fluid. You know, um, Cynthia asked her if she had met any guys while she was there, um, any nice looking boys and this and that. And Noelle responds and says there were a lot of nice looking girls. And Cynthia lets us know that, you know, while she was away at school, she, um, called home and you know her and Cynthia had a talk and she learned that Noel was pretty much sex sexually fluid um Cynthia asked her if she considered herself to be bisexual Noel was saying that you know she doesn't want to be put in a box you know so Cynthia came up with the term fluid. You know, if she sees a beautiful girl that she wants to get to know and be in a relationship with, then she'll do that. If she says, sees a handsome man that she finds attractive and wants to get to know and, you know, wants to be in a relationship, then, you know, she's open to that. Cynthia just lets her know, you know, bottom line, I just want you to be happy. I don't care if it's with a girl or if it's with a boy. Love is love. Um, she wants to know if she's uh, dating anyone official. Noelle isn't dating anyone, you know, officially. Um, she's just having fun. She's back home. She's just, you know, chilling or whatever. But I completely understand where Cynthia is coming from because that's how I feel. If you love a man, love a man. If you love a woman, love a woman. Just be happy in whoever it is that you choose. Love is love. Live life to the fullest. So next up, we're with Marlo and Candy. They're at some little trampoline place. Candy is, is, um, not expecting it to be what it, what it was when she bounced on that trampoline. She almost bust her booty. Ace is with her. Ace wasn't feeling it. He, he, it shocked him in a certain kind of way. He started whining, but you know, she played with them. They got used to it. Marlo walks in with the sequin jacket and I'm like, Girl, you in a trampoline place with a sequin jacket? <laughs> okay, but she's got all these kids with her, and we learned that Marlo is now a Monty, which is a mommy and an auntie. Um, her sister, one day, out of the blue, her nephew calls and says, Auntie, can you come pick me up? They're getting ready to take my mom away. And uh, Marlo's like, the police are there? He was like, no, um, the mental health facility is here. 
So clearly somebody called in something. I, I, she got tangled up in something and she ended up being taken away to a mental institution. So Marlo had to go and get her nephew and she had um, two other kids with her. I believe one of them she keeps in the afternoon because his mom is in school. So she um, keeps him from two to five. So yes, Marlo is a Monty now. I wonder how that's going to work with her lifestyle based on what the word on the curb is that Marlo lifestyle is. How is that going to work? You got three kids with you. Two of them are with you full time. Hmm. Anyway, she got um, a little emotional as she's sharing her story and Candy lets her know that when she first had Riley, she ended up had it, having to get, um, you know, take care of a 12 year old on top of just having Riley. You know, it's commendable that you put yourself out there to love and take care of someone else's kids while, while they can't do it. So Candy gives her, uh, you know, advice, you know, just basically take things slow. You're going to, it's going to take some adjustment, but it's, a, it's commendable of Marlo. It's commendable. So Candy, um, as you know, they get to talking about Nene and Candy lets Marlo know that she did receive a text from Nene, from Nene, which shocked her because, um, you know, when it last left off, you know, Nene was very upset over the whole closet thing, which Candy was a part of. Marlo says, you know, the girls have to get it together because she basically feels like she's in the middle. She gets along with everybody and she doesn't want to be in this stressful position. Candy lets her know that, you know, the other ladies need to, you know, get to know Marlo for Marlo and not necessarily the Marlo that's always there on Nene's side. Marlo lets Candy know that, you know, she does tell Nene off and tells Nene when she's wrong. Um, it's just not done in front of them. You know, that's what good, good girlfriends do. You let, you let your good, good girlfriend know when they're off the chain and they're the ones in the wrong, but they don't necessarily do that in front of, you know, others. So I understood where Milo was coming from. Candy was giving her the side eye and, um, of course, they get to, you know, back to talking about that whole closet situation. Um, Marlo says she will talk to Nene because she feels that uh, Nene is pretty much the one in the wrong in this entire situation. And now that Greg is cancer free, she feels that Nene is in a much better place. So that's going to be interesting. We're over with Portia and Shamia. Shamia arrives with her cute little baby girl. And so they get together. So what's going on, girl? What's, what's, what's up? You know, Portia's like, I got us some uh, mommy drinks, you know, drinks that, uh, you know, are low in alcohol. And it looks like some type of wine cooler. Of course, they're not going to show us the label. They ain't going to do that. We end up finding out that Dennis ended up spending the night. She goes and tells us the whole story about how that happens. And, you know, PJ, baby PJ had a doctor's appointment. Um, Dennis met them. They stopped afterwards and had a drink. Uh, they go back to the house and, and do some Netflix and chilling. But, you know, the movie that they were watching and the drinks that they were having, the movie ended up being a series. So they ended up having another drink. And the next thing you know, she waking up and Dennis is next to her. So, you know, we get into this little back and forth about is there a possibility that she's pregnant and this and that. Um, Portia is upset because she feels that she put out a signal that she didn't want to be put out there. Um, basically stating that, you know, saying that everything was good, that she had, you know, moved on or forgiven, you know, what he's done and she's over it and they're back together. And that's just not necessarily the case. She's toying with the idea of going to counseling um, with Dennis and um, she doesn't know if she she's caught in like a catch 22. She wants to hear 
um, the truth. She wants to hear Dennis tell her the truth, but at the same time, she's not necessarily sure if she wants to hear the truth. Um, she doesn't know where, you know, how she's going to respond to it. She doesn't, she's just totally confused. The only thing that Portia knows right now for sure is that Dennis was inappropriate with another woman. And I'm just, I, I was like, girl, okay, I understand that you're confused. You're not sure if you want to hear the truth, but you want to hear the truth. You don't know how you're going to respond once you hear the truth. Is it going to be finally he admits the truth or am I going to, you know, just say this relationship is done and I'm going to walk away? I understand all of that, but either tell us what went down, just come out and tell us what went down or stop, you know, stringing us along. I don't like to be strung along, y'all. I, I hate it. And that's what I'm feeling that is happening right now. Portia is stringing us along and I'm sick of it. And we're only the second episode in of the season. <laughs> it's just one of those things that I cannot stand. Can I surprises? Love surprises. Being strung along? No. I don't like my emo my emotions toyed with. Period. So yeah, I'm over it. I'm over it. We're over with Kenya. She's meeting up with uh Cynthia. They're going into some spiritual shop. And we get deeper into Kenya's problems with Eva. Kenya got a new car. She doesn't quite not know how to work it. Um, I was like, why are the, all the cars on the show either black or white? But the majority of them are white. Is it because they lease these cars for the season? I'm wondering. And they all have the same type of car. Land Rover. Um, Kenya pulled up in a Tesla. I'm just wondering you know, I, I've, I've connected this, these expensive cars that they drive and the fact that they are all white and they're all pretty much the same model car. Later on in the episode, we see Portia. She's also driving a, a Land Rover. Hers is black though. Anyway, moving on. Kenya goes into talking about old ish between Cynthia and Eva when Eva was talking about um, you know, saying some nasty, shady things about when Cynthia was messing around with the guy, Will. And um, Cynthia was like, girl, we've got, you know, we've moved past that. It's over. And Kenya's like, but girl, I haven't moved past it. Kenya is looking for reasons to not like Eva. Mm -hmm. Cynthia tries to tell her, of course, they start talking about why Eva didn't bring her kids to baby Brooklyn's coming out party. And Cynthia's trying to tell her that the way that she's taking it is not the way that it was meant. Kenya gets a little frustrated with um, Cynthia because she now sees that Cynthia and Eva has this newfound friendship. And she's, of course, shading um, Cynthia in, you know, bonding and being friends with Eva. I'm like, Kenya girl, you just want to be mad. You know that girl didn't mean any malice towards that. You you know, you know, Kenya, okay. You work that storyline, girl. You work that storyline. So next up, we're with Cindy, Candy, Cynthia, Candy, and Eva. They're at a bridal shop. They're getting ready for um, New York Pride that's happening in a couple of weeks. And Cynthia, you know, is looking for, you know, something to ride the float with. They're going to be on the float. So, you know, of course, the question is, have you spoken to Nene? And Cynthia has not spoken to Nene. They go back to, you know, how things went down at the reunion and that, and um, Kenya being, in, being invited to Cynthia's Seagram's party. And, you know, how they ended up her how cynthia and nini have ended up in the place that they are at now which is not speaking to each other and of course they get to talking to eva about you know kenya and you know the fact that eva didn't bring her kids to the party and how kenya feels slightly offended or whatever and eva's like when it comes to my kids i choose where they go who they are around and that's just period you know 
I'm their protector. I'm the one that needs to make sure the environment that they are in is a safe environment for them. I understood where Eva was coming from. She goes on to say, and she doesn't have to explain herself to no one. Nope, she shouldn't. Senya, um, Cynthia goes on to tell Eva how Kenya, you know, felt a little bit insulted. And it was, you know, they let Eva know that it was Portia who brought it to Kenya. And, um, of course, Eva starts her, her shade session. Um, but before she gets into Portia, she's like, you know, I don't even know Kenya. I don't even know what her real color is. And I was like, shade? Because, you know, she's going to come back and say, I was not shading anybody. You know how Eva does. Yeah. When you said that the, you don't even know the girl's eye color, you could have stopped at, I stopped at, I don't even know Kenya. And that would have been fine. But no, you went on further to say, I don't even know her real eye color. That's where the shade comes in. Um, and then, you know, she goes on to talk about, you know, when I was at the party, did I even ask where her husband was? I was like, okay, more shade. Eva's going to backpedal on all of this, okay? Portia, um, she goes on to talk about, you, you know, Portia needs to mind her own business. And, you know, if if she doesn't know what her business is, I can point her to a few blogs that have all her business out there. I was like, okay, Eva, that's shade, girl. <laughs> You know, you could have left that, you know, Portia's got a lot going on. She needs to mind her own business and that would have been fine. But no, mm -mm. you want to point her to all of her business being put out there in the blog in case she doesn't know that what her business is. Girl, Eva, you go too far, but I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So we're over with Portia. She's, you know, in the Land Rover heading over to a therapy appointment with Dennis. Um, she goes on, now she's in the moment where she just wants to know the truth. Um, even though she doesn't know how she will handle it. She's at the point now where she wants him to own up to it. She wants to hear the truth coming from him. So, you know, she goes on to talk about how she has watched her sister go through, um, you know, the cheating issues with her significant other. I don't remember if the sister was married or if they were dating. I think they were married. Um, and we knew that her, that the sister and the brother-in-law had broken up, but we didn't know, I didn't know that it was as a result of cheating. But, you know, Portia has learned some things from Lauren and what she went through with her man. Um, so, we see Portia pull up in front of the therapist's office. Of course, she's at Dr. Sherry. Um, and then 35 minutes later, we see Portia leaving the office. She gets in the car and she completely breaks down saying that she can't do it. It's the next day. We're over at Portia's house. Lauren arrives and she let Lauren know that, you know, the whole therapy session did not go well at all. She's heartbroken. She starts to cry. She's ashamed. She's embarrassed. She's trying to cover up her face with a pillow. And um, she finally lets us know that Dennis fully admitted to cheating. And it happened during her pregnancy. So she got upset, she mushed him in the face, and she left. She's at the point now, you know, she's just finding out. She's um, finally getting confirmation to what she felt because she says, you know, she felt something all along. She just wanted the confirmation. And getting that confirmation, it has truly, completely broken her. And she's she's at that stage where it's unfor unforgivable. You know, she could raise her baby by herself. She's watched her sister do it. Her sister starts to break down. Her sister's like, being a single parent, it's hard. She does not want that for Portia. She wants Portia to take a step back. She wants Portia to process it, take a deep breath, and, um, and then think about what it is that she wants to do. But Portia starts reminiscing about all the times that they shared throughout her pregnancy, him rubbing on her stomach, you know. Dennis fully um, spoiled Portia during that moment. And now we know that some of that spoiling was as a result of guilt for what he was doing on the side. A lot of times when men um, pop up with gifts uh, for no reason, sometimes it's as a result of, of them doing something wrong. 
and it makes them feel better to give something to you that makes you happy, some materialistic thing. And Portia is going through all of this. We get to see all of the times, you know, they shared these loving moments while she was pregnant. We saw her at the doctor's office and she's tying that too. So, you know, when you were with me, you were planning to be with someone else. She's in, you know, she's at that stage. She's going to work through it. We know she's going to work through it because now we know they're back together. Um, but right now, she does not want to go on with him. She wants to end it, even though Lauren is trying to get her to, you know, take a step back. Don't settle this right now. Don't make a decision right now because being a single mother is hard. I've been one, <laughs> so I can attest to it. It ain't easy. It is hard hard even though you have a support system i had a support system my mom and my brother um they were there for me um even when we moved they were there for me but it was still hard because i'm my son's mother the bulk of the responsibility comes from me the mothering the parenting comes from me and that's hard doing it alone so that was the end of the episode y'all it was it was an okay episode i just got annoyed with being strung along i don't like being strung along i don't like my emotions being played with and and um you know all of the you know he's been inappropriate and not really coming out and saying what it was that he's done i felt strung along but now i'm good now that i she's put it out there the man was cheating we already knew he was cheating but She's put it out there that he was cheating. So now we can move on to healing. You know what I'm saying? All right. Did y'all watch the episode? I know I didn't talk about everything. Get down in the comments. If I didn't discuss something that you want to discuss, y'all can put it down there in the comments. If you want to um, send me a voice message, um, you can head on over to the hotline. You can voice your opinion on the episode over at the hotline. The hotline telephone number is area code 470-729-1909. If you have made it to the end and you are not subscribed to this channel, I don't know what you are waiting on. I was looking at my analytics the other day and I get thousands of people who watch my video, but they aren't subscribing. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Become part of the family. We have a good time over here. There's no mess. There's no drama. There's no malice in anything or any story I come in to talk about. I always try to be respectful in doing that, but I am one of those that will call it like I see it. So come on, hit the subscribe button, be a part of family. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Let me give a shout out to my Patreon folks. Thank you so much for your financial support. Um, we were supposed to go live this past weekend, but your girl went back to the gym and it was a new can do. My apologies. It was a no can do. We're going to get there. I promise you guys, we are going to get there. All right, y'all. That's all I got. Remember to be good to yourselves and each other, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Yes, 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 the Beautiful Souls Boutique is now open. We've got mugs, we've got tote bags, we've got hoodies, and we've got so much more. The boutique is open 24 hours a day for your shopping pleasure. Go on over and check it out, and as always, I thank you for your support.